Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today we have some incredible virtual reality news stories. It's almost like every single story is something big that's just happened in the virtual reality space. I've got anticipated games, new quest features, new tech. There's so much here and this episode is also a little special as we're going to be celebrating 50,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. If you're new here, please consider subscribing as I have virtual reality news stories on a weekly basis to keep you updated and also random videos throughout the week. And as a thank you, there is going to be a giveaway going on. I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can win an Oculus Quest, some games, some merch, and perhaps some accessories as well. Whatever you would like, it will be up to you. But that's enough chinwagging. We have so many stories to go over, so let's get started. So let's start this off with a new quest update that's just happened very, very shortly after the release of the version 25 update, which left many people having issues with the Oculus Quest. Some murmuring was going on in the community. They were not happy. This update, I'm not sure if it deserves a major version bump though, although it does bring some new features, so perhaps it's fine, but it's just not as packed as the previous updates that we tend to see. So in version 26, we have the Couch Guardian. We expected this to come after a while back. We found some images of a couch, of the Couch Guardian within the source code. This allows you to set the outline of your sofa in your play space, and it'll bring that sofa into your virtual world. So you know where the sofa is, and you can easily go from standing to sitting. And when you do this transition, when you sit down, it will adjust the home menu so it's a more comfortable experience for you. It's not going to be way in the distance. It will readjust everything to a sitting down mode. This is in the experimental section, so go to settings, go to experimental, click add sofa, and then you'll draw a flat plane of where your sofa is, and boom, it will bring a virtual couch into your virtual reality space. The pass-through will kick in when you go near the sofa, so it may be a good thing to do this if you don't have a sofa in your environment. Perhaps do it on some valuable item such as a TV for some extra safety, and I wish I had that feature before I broke mine. <sighs> it's too sad. Another doozy now, you may have heard that this week, Sony put out a blog post confirming that the PlayStation VR 2 is coming and it hints at what we can kind of expect with this new device. Sony will be releasing a PlayStation 5 virtual reality headset, but it's not going to be wireless like some of the patterns that we saw, which is kind of sad. Instead, it's going to be a single cable connection rather than the madness that we previously had because that setup for the PlayStation VR 1 was just something that put me off playing the PlayStation VR. That and the tracking, it was just so cumbersome. And as expected, the headset is going to see improved resolution, not the original 1080p, which is not the best. It's gonna have a higher field of view, a different tracking method, thank goodness, and a different user input method than the PlayStation VR 1. I hope that is a hint at inside out tracking, as I don't want to stand in front of a camera in front of my TV and not have the ability to turn around. I'm hoping maybe the wireless device, it could be an add-on, a couple years down the line after its release. It'll be a good way to make more money after its release, and also we're going to have a cycle of like four to five years if it's anything like the first generation, so it could keep us into virtual reality for a longer time. And also, if you've been lucky enough to have a PlayStation 5, you'll know that the DualSense haptics in that controller are something special, and they want to add components of that remote into the virtual reality experience, and I think that sounds so, so exciting, such as the triggers. They add resistance. That in virtual reality will be even more immersive exciting times and maybe now Sony could be extra competitive in terms of specs in their techs for incredible virtual reality experiences because their games are amazing I wish they'd bring those games to the PC platform so we can enjoy them as well but it's their own exclusives they can do what they want with them but it would just be really nice to see play some of these great games with good VR tech Another incredible advancement here, a new advancement that can change standalone virtual reality and give us the ability to play high-end virtual reality gaming anywhere in the world with a decent internet connection. Plutosphere is a new and up-and-coming virtual reality streaming platform, and they're going to focus on bringing cloud gaming to the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2 as their first call of order. The company have brought us virtual reality features before, such as a voice chat service in Steam VR. But it seems like they've got other plans now, and I'm really happy to see this. There are alternatives such as Shadow PC, but if you've signed up to Shadow, you'll know that the platform scaling is very, very slow, and you have to wait. You can't just get a machine. You have to order a machine and wait for it to be provisioned. It's not completely the most user-friendly experience, but what Pluto are doing is they're going to utilize multiple vendors such as Amazon Web Services, which is a platform used by some of the biggest tech companies in the entire world, and the reliability of this platform fills me with confidence. And the fact that they're going to have multiple vendors means that Pluto 
can have leverage to try and bring the best experience to its customers and be competitive with its pricing because they can just threaten to leave one vendor and go to another. In order to utilize this platform, you're going to need internet speeds of up to 50 megabits per second and a Wi-Fi 6 router. So you're going to need super fast internet and high speed so your latency is as small as possible. Because in virtual reality, latency is an absolute killer and it won't take off if it's bad. Because they're using AWS though, they've got servers all over the globe. So when you order a machine or order some hardware so you can have some cloud gaming, they can provision a server that's near you to reduce the latency as much as possible. So this is incredibly exciting. The ability to play PC VR gaming anywhere in the world with a good internet connection. It's, if they do this well, this could be an absolute game changer. This is gonna be available on SideQuest when it first launches, and then hopefully App Lab. I have signed up for it, so as soon as it's available, I'm going to be there testing this out for you guys. The Climb 2 has got a release date. It's time to get excited. A loved game by the community is coming on the 4th of March. I have got cheeky access of this game and I will be showing it off at launch. So so please stick around for that if you're interested in this title and the game's going to have improved visuals as you'd expect new maps and environments to climb more events and extra content that we have not seen before and to celebrate its up and coming release crytek are doing a giveaway where you can win 10 keys so that's going to be 10 winners chosen to win a copy of this game on its release i'll leave a link down below if you want to enter that i want to take a minute now to talk about a new game that's coming in its early access next week and that will contain some of your favorite youtubers it's definitely a bucket list tick for me to be in a game so in this game i have a ship that's inspired by my branding and i also have myself voice acting as your coach talking in your ear how you're racing how well you're doing or how bad you're doing whilst you're competing in your race with my ship there are also other appearances such as e4p bmf paradise decay familiar faces so this is a racer where the ship is an extension of your arm and you have to maneuver your way around the track get nitro boosts avoid traps slow down time an interesting feature of this as well is that you will all be be battling it out in online matches against people. You're always going to be competitive against people because it's using some asynchronous tech. So you may not be playing at the same time as somebody else, but you will be racing other people's runs. I'll link down below in the description so you can check this game out. I'll also, there's a little clip on my Twitter of myself racing my ship and coaching you in my ear. I'm just so, so happy and honored to be part of this. So thank you guys for letting me do this. Oh, the day is coming. It is upon us. I'm so happy to see this. Dave Vils said Pavlov Shack should be coming to App Lab this month, but we are still waiting. However, a new video has just popped up showing us the Quest 2 visual improvements for build 24. And the visuals look so sweet. What an improvement over the current build. Because it was never the best looking game. That's for sure. It was never the best looking game on Quest. And we've seen other shooters make incremental improvements for this new hardware. And now the game seems very very crisp the visuals are very clean the gameplay is very smooth which could be due to the clip that they've chosen to show us but the game usually when you've side loaded it on the quest one or the quest two the current build it's not incredibly smooth it does jolt every now and again and the guns are also very shiny perhaps they're using some specular mapping like they did in onward and it made the guns look really really good and the blood splatter looks so brutal i'll link the two videos that were shown off by dave vills down below in the description they make the game just look so so good good and I'm incredibly excited now for its release. Just when's it coming? I'm tired of waiting. There's been a game update now for a loved game called Gorn Pure Satirical Violence. It's just got a new update that makes use of the Quest 2's extra power and its new screen. So now it supports 90 hertz for smoother gameplay. And with this update also comes some nice visual updates to the game as well, which also apply to the Quest 1, such as blood now appears on the weapons after you've attacked somebody. And there's also improved shading for some of the weapons as well for some tastier visuals. And as I said, that's on Quest 1 and on Quest 2. So if you've got the game, you may want to dive in again, check out this update, enjoy the smoother gameplay. And if you haven't played it before, but you're just really into 90 Hertz on standalone, well, the game's now got an update for it. This next story has the potential to be an absolute changer for virtual reality. And that is that Steam VR has just got an update. It's just updated itself to a later version, 1.16, which now has full support of OpenXR. This is an industry standard that should allow games that are going to be on one platform or another device be easily portable to another platform with no code changes. As OpenXR is a standard that uses a single API rather than bespoke ones per game. So now devs are able to build OpenXR applications that can be cross-platform 
with minimal effort, which means that they can potentially make more money. And for virtual reality, a growing industry is great news. It could also mean that there's more effort applied to some games that make them even better, the visuals even better, because it's more feasible. There's also additional improvements to CMVR, such as throttling, tracking prediction, and motion smoothing. So time will tell if this standard's going to make a big difference for virtual reality, and it might be a while until we see devs actually starting to utilize it, at least for these really big games where we can really test what this OpenXR has to offer. Another mad one now. Bosworth, the VP of Facebook Reality Labs, did another Q&A, and this is where he previously announced that 120 Hertz could be coming to the Oculus Quest. And again, another cheeky one. He has hinted at an Oculus Quest Pro. So not a Quest 3, but a Pro model, a more beefed up version of the existing headset, where perhaps we have more comfort, a higher refresh rate, wider FOV, higher resolution panel maybe. I doubt, I doubt that one for some reason. So during this Q&A, when he was asked about a Quest Pro, would this be happening? He just said, interesting and winked as if they were already thinking about it. And Zuckerberg did actually recently say that they were working on new hardware already. So I'm just speculating here, but maybe this is also where the 120 Hertz come from. Maybe the Quest 2 Pro is going to support 120 Hertz for PC VR and its standalone content. I don't know this. It's just interesting bits of information have been released over time that are kind of coming together. The planets are aligning. So let me know what you'd like to see in an Oculus Quest Pro. I personally, I'd love a new strap like the DAS Audio strap, great audio, great comfort, and a wider FOV. I'd also like to see support for Wi-Fi 6E, not just Wi-Fi 6. Another great story. This is a win for virtual reality and for us as a community. I'm very happy to see this one. We have an official application on the Oculus Quest store for wireless PC VR. Previously, virtual desktop was only allowed on the official store if it removed the wireless PC VR streaming feature because Oculus, they couldn't rely on the experience for everybody using the app based on the quality of their internet connection. So they said, no, please remove it. You can have virtual desktop, but not this streaming feature. So we had to sideload it to enjoy wireless PC VR games. Gaming. But Guy Godin, the developer of this application, applied for this patch to be on App Lab, so people wouldn't have to go through the effort of sideloading it. And in a crazy epic turn of events, the patch has been approved to be on the official Oculus Quest store. No sideloading, no App Lab, just part of the default application. So now anyone with this app can play PC VR without having to sideload or install anything off App Lab. It's a default feature. I'm kind of curious of what made them change their mind to allow this onto the official store. It kind of shows to me that their approval process is somewhat subjective. We now have another new feature coming to the Quest, so check your experimental section of your device as there should be a new one for voice commands. Well, you remember on the Xbox One, perhaps you don't, but I certainly do, where you used to shout the Xbox, go home, you're drunk at the Kinect. You now have the ability to wake up your Oculus Quest talking to it like Alexa or Google. You have to say, hey, Facebook, which I'm sure some of you are gonna find very controversial as why can't I say hi Oculus or hi Quest, why Facebook? This is rolling out to Quest 2 headsets with Quest 1 owners to come in the future. So previously to activate voice commands on this headset, you had to double tap something on the controller and then you could talk to it to boot up an application. But if you're not keen of this idea of saying, hey, Facebook, they have said the Quest won't listen to hey, Facebook when the microphone is either disabled, when the headset is powered down, and they will also have the ability to deactivate the feature. But if you do want it, this will allow you to boot up games from your library, capture screenshots, all with your voice, so you don't have to navigate through all of the games and the menus that you have. In the United Kingdom, though, we don't have this voice voice command feature. I don't know why, I've just not seen it. So if you're in the UK, I don't think we get this. But if you're in America or other countries that have had this support, enjoy this. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up on the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Please consider subscribing because I'll be here every single week, every Saturday, giving you the news of what's been happening in the virtual reality space. Don't forget to join the giveaway. So sub, join the giveaway. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks to my patrons, you're absolute legends. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.